Well, I think it is important that information like this, interviews with scientists about these problems, get out to the American public so they can be informed about these issues and draw their own conclusions about what ought to happen here, uh, what kind of abuses have happened, and what kind of changes in policy are needed uh, to address these concerns. Uh, the scientific community has a stake in this issue and ought to speak out, and more scientists ought to join in this effort uh, because it has a fundamental impact on the role of science in society and on the use of scientific information in making important decisions in uh, federal policy. Uh, so while well, we've made a good start with the more than 5,000 scientists that have signed on to the statement, uh, we urge every scientist to take this issue seriously, look at the statement, uh, consider adding their name to it, uh, talk to their professional society, write articles in their professional journals, talk to colleagues, and try to continue to build the base of support within the scientific community for action on this important problem. Well, I didn't enter the scientific field just because I wanted to get personal knowledge that was better. I entered the scientific field because I wanted to try and make a, make a better world. Um, and uh, the only way we're going to do it in, in this field is helping the world community understand what the, what the issue is, what it's about, and that they have to learn to, we're going to have to learn to take a different path. And so I participate in a whole range of activities of trying to reach out to the public in, in various ways to help them benefit from the scientific knowledge that I've, I've worked to, to gain originally through modeling and then through some of these later coordination efforts um, and, and help them understand that we have a path to work through uh, to the future. I mean, when we started the uh, Cold War, nobody knew if we were going to make it through. I mean, people had nuclear weapons and we could have gone to a world war and people could have, terrible things could have happened. We were sort of march, marching along a ridge, mountain ridge line and, and we try and avoid falling off and you basically have experts telling you, well, if you take a step this way, you might fall off. We might have gone to war with Cuba or we might have, something else might have happened. You're going to go along a path and we were able to try and work through as a, as a country our defense issue so we had a world where we could have six billion people on it and we can be producing enough for that. Um, we've got to do the same thing for the next 50, 100 years and more. Uh, the, the world population is heading toward eight or 10 billion people. The technologies that we have today aren't going to keep people alive then. We're going to run out of petroleum at some point or something. So we have to have some new ways of keeping people alive. Well, we also have to know what the consequences are of using those technologies in different ways. And so we have to find a, a path through uh, in a democratic fashion. I mean, if I were you know, the, the benevolent ruler of the world, maybe I could help take through, but, but that isn't the way the world works. Well, I think it's very critical that scientists have opportunities to talk to the public about science because I think that science shouldn't be turned into a kind of soundbite show because then it's very easy to take away a misconception about the science and then the whole process of poor information on which to base policy gets reinforced. In some ways, I think we, uh, we underestimate the public. Uh, I've found that when I've talked at large gatherings of uh, you know, interested people about science, people, people are curious. As I said, we, we are a curious species. We are very interested in the world and in science. And I think perhaps the news media do a disservice by underestimating people's appetite for science. It's very important for people to hear the science itself because it's not just black and white and sound bites, and particularly in biology and medicine, things are more subtle and more nuanced. And every person knows that. We know that we're, we're complex beings. I also think the public does care a lot about science and science policy. And 
Uh, for example, when I was discontinued off the Bioethics Council, not only did I get deluges of email and also letters and um, phone calls, but I also got letters from ordinary citizens who were very outraged that science policy would be based on something other than good science. I think people value that science policy at least have as its basis, you know, good, accurate science.